Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Peng Fei. I'm currently a professor with School of Computer Science and Technology at Shandong University. Uh, today, I will uh, give my talk is about the ever dropping with uh, uh, millimeter wave radar. So we all know that the the ever dropping has long history, right? So in China, uh, there is an idiom called say. Um, the wall has ears. So I think maybe a lot of, a lot of us uh, may hear about this, this, this idiom. So that's a, uh, when we talk about something and uh, on the other side, uh, on the outside of the wall, maybe someone is eavesdropping. Um, but currently, the traditional eavesdropping may be not practical uh, for some reason. For example, if we in um, pre set a recorder into the room, and we, if we place a recorder into the room, maybe it's easy to be found, right? And uh, currently, and, and currently the soundproof materials actually widely used in modern buildings, so it makes the evil dropping um, more difficult than past. And sometimes uh, the loud noise in the room also makes the evil it was dropping impossible. <clears throat> okay. Uh, nowadays, uh, researchers tried many ways to do the evil dropping. So the first one is that we use a motion sensor. So the we know that on our phones, um, there is the IMU sensor. To uh, it, 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 it's very sensitive to 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 the sound, and uh, we also ha have a work. Last year's Auckland is used the uh, MU to do the evil dropping um, on the on the phone, and uh, the second one is that we use some uh, there are some attackers try to use a uh, um, sensor on the hard drive to to evil drop the data. So, but both of these ways are invasive, invasive attack. We have. It they all require the pre-installed software or the or, or the sensors, and uh, the third one is the optical schemes. <clears throat> uh, maybe a lot of us uh, may see this scenario. We use a, a laser or use a high-speed camera to uh, to observe the vibration, and then we can retrieve the. Vi uh, if, we can, if we can retrieve the vibration, then we can um, reconstruct the original uh, audio. But the optical one is also easy to uh, be prevented, s such as if we just uh, put down the, the curtain, it can be prevented. <clears throat> and uh, the last one is the radio. The radio, <clears throat> previous one, they tr uh, previous works, they try to use uh, the Wi-Fi signal, uh, because the vibration also cause uh, has some interference with uh, the. We also interfere the the Wi-Fi signal, so they can also use uh, the radio to sense uh, to sense a voice, but it has low resolution. That means it can only recognize the very very limited word. So our target is that. We do the uh, we do the evolving on unconstrained word vocabulary. So um, as we see that in this scenario, if we say something, um, our sound will induce the vibration on a um, lot of objects around us, such as the curtain or the paper or the chip bags. <laughs> And uh, this vibration, but this, vi th this vibration is very, very tiny. So if we try to <clears throat> capture this kind of vibration, we must, uh, uh, it must require the, the micro level vibration sensing. Uh, this is also our first contribution. Uh, in our scheme, we can capture the micro uh, micro micrometer level vibration. The second that is that uh, all the previous work, if they try, if they try to do the uh, vibration sensing, 
that require a sequence of chirps. Chirps is a is a uh, is a is a phase used. Uh, it's something like the echo. We send out a chirp, and then we get a we, we, we get an echo, and then we can get the, we can measure the distance between the objects in front of us. <clears throat> uh, but all the previous uh, that they require the, uh, a sequence of uh, chirps to get a measurement. But in our scheme, we only use for each chirp we can get a measurement. So we uh, so we uh, can improve our sampling rate to cover the human speech spectrum. Uh, the last, uh, the, the third line is that, uh, as I said, we do not do the classifications. A lot of previous work that do classifications and uh, can recognize a very limited word, but in our scheme, we can achieve unconstrained vocabulary. Uh, the fourth one is, yeah, we, we, we can even drop on multiple audio source. And the last one, and the most important one, is that we don't, do not require the machine learning method. We do not require uh, rely on machine learning. That means we don't need, it, it's data independent. So in evil dropping scenario, we know that if we try to do the evil dropping, we must collect a lo lot of data, or huge amount of data to train a model. But in our, in our work, we rely on pure signal processing. So this is a thread model. Uh, when someone tried, uh, when someone says something, and uh, the sound will <laughs> induce a vibration of the surrounding object, and uh, we use a, a millimeter radar to sense this vibration, and then reconstruct the the audio. The this is some. Um, everyday objects, for example, the, the tin foil or the leaves or chip bags or papers. <coughs> okay, this uh, system architecture, and the first part is that we try to locate the, uh, the vibrate object. And the second one is that we, uh, how, how can we <coughs> accurately met, measure the, uh, the vibration? And the third one is uh, just uh, some uh, trivial work. It's about the audio noise re uh, re reducing. So le let me explain the, the first one. The first part is that <clears throat> if we try to uh, locate the object, if we say something, or, 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 the, or the sound will induce some vibration. The, vib the vibration means the, the object will move, right? If it moves, we can measure the, we can measure the speed, uh, a velocity, or the speed. So we set the range gate and, uh, and the speed gate to locate the, strong, the, uh, the, the strongest uh, the object or the surface. And we use that surface as a reverberator. And the second part is that how we do the phase calibration. Phase calibration is that uh, how we can measure the distance. It's directly related to the phase. The phase is that how uh, how much degrees the the signal uh, travel the the round travel? How much the the degree shift in the in, in, in the round travel? And uh, this phase calibration based on two phases. The first one is the calculation based phase. It's, uh, it's, it can be retrieved from the frequency, and the second one is from the from the phase or uh, the first one is how much, uh, how many wrong, how many phase rotations, and the second one is much accurate. And we put this together, we can get the uh, the wrong phases and the much ac uh, accurate phases. And uh, this is uh, some example of we do the phase calibration. <laughs> it, it basically we do the the phase wrapping. So phase wrapping means if if the if the phase uh, larger than pi or smaller than uh, minus pi, so we must uh, uh, adjust it because it's 
it's larger than two pies, right? It is not within the range. So uh, two pi means a rotation. So we, we must calculate how many rotation it is. OK, so this is our setup. Uh, we use uh, uh, off-the-shelf uh, millimeter radar. It's from the Texas instrument. And uh, the radar sensor, we put uh, the radar sensor uh, one meter from the reverberator, and uh, also the uh, loudspeaker also one millimeter, uh, one meter from the reverberator. And between, there is an insulator between the radar sensor and the reverberator. That's the drywall. And, uh, OK. So we uh, evaluate it. We collect the voice data from eight, eight users and uh, in five languages. So we, the first um, metric we used uh, to evaluate our scheme is uh, MCT. So MCT means uh, male uh, spectral distortion. It measures uh, uh, how much the reconstructed audio uh, distorted from the original audio. So the lower, the better. And uh, so first, uh, we evaluate the, the, the distance. So we put the radar uh, from 0.5 meters uh, to 5 meters apart from the uh, reverberator, and uh, we can see that. Uh, all, also, okay, the MCD. MCD. If the if MCD is below eight, that means the result is uh, uh, acceptable. So MCD is actually a wide used matrix in the speech uh, synthesis. Okay. Uh, also, we we also uh, evaluated on the on the angles. So we uh, vary the uh, the radar phase direct to the to the reverter and uh, to and uh, at most to the sixty degrees. And uh, we also uh, evaluate on different uh, reverberators, so such as uh, tin foil, tube bags, and uh, papers. So we can see that. The actually the worst results come from the uh, the paper. So the reason we figure out is that uh, so most of the millimeter wave signal will penetrate the the paper. It won't go back. So we get the worst result. Okay. This uh, the second uh, metric we use is uh, is the WR. WR is the word error rate. So that's uh, we we use the uh, Google Speech Recognition API to process uh, our reconstructed audio and uh, compare the recognized words with the original one and uh, calculate the, uh, uh, how many error words. And uh, we can say that on, uh, the worst results also come from the papers. It's uh, uh, almost reached to 40. But the good ones is uh, the tin foil or the chip bags is almost around the 10. And the third matrix uh, is uh, MOS. It's a mean opinion score. So we recruit uh, some uh, volunteer to evaluate the uh, the reconstruct audio and uh, ask them to access the performance. So that will get some score. The, okay. So we also evaluate on different languages. Actually, on different languages, uh, uh, there's no much difference. So we also compare our scheme with previous work. So uh, the MM Spy, MM Spy is uh, is a work targeted as a, a phone call evil dropping. They also use a millimeter radar uh, to pinpoint to the phone call, and the phone the, the phone call voice will induce the vibration on the phones. So their reverberator actually is a phone. And we also compare with uh, many year. Many year is also okay. Uh, okay. Uh, at last, I, I will show you some uh, visual results. So 
the, the above figure is the original audio, and the, the bottom figure is uh, our reconstruct audio. And I also play the, uh, uh, play the audio, and let's... Sh Cambridge IELTS 3 by the University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate. Published by Cambridge University Press. Test 1. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. Cambridge Isle 3 by the University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate. Published by Cambridge University Press. Test 1. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, any question? Any questions? Okay. Yeah. I have to go speak. Mark. Or you can use this. When we were just listening to, was that the tinfoil version? Uh, yes, it's tinfoil. <laughs> yeah, it's a better result, actually. <laughs> okay. Other questions? So in yours, you have a question? Okay, yes. Is Rohit from UCSD? So I have a question that, uh, can you apply machine learning algorithms on top of your result and increase the performance? Yeah, actually we, uh, we can, but in this scenario we try to not use the machine learning. Actually our previous work is the many year use the machine learning, but actually the result is not even as good as the uh, the MM echo. But we can use the machine learning to do the uh, noise reduction. <laughs> Thank you.